welcome to another video today i would like to discuss about workflows uh, and jobs in workflows in databricks i have already made a video on delta live tables today i would like to discuss about jobs in uh, jobs inside the workflows in databricks like how do we create a jobs and how do we create tasks what kind of tasks we can create how to create an hierarchy between the task and everything i'll try to cover up everything whatever we can do inside the jobs in databricks workflows okay like the major purpose if you ask me the purpose of creating a jobs is like to create a task dependency for suppose if you want some notebooks to run first and then the consecutive not notebook then the third notebook we can create some kind of hierarchy as well and again we can do uh, scheduling as well if you want to trigger this notebook only when the file arrives we can do that if you want to schedule the notebook uh, at particular point of time in a day we can do that and we, we if there is no dependency in some notebooks if you want to run those notebooks parallelly then we can run them then we can decide that parallel execution as well and also databricks has multiple features right like we can we have co queries in databricks we have delta live tables in databricks we have notebooks in databricks we can do spark submit job in databricks so all these also we can create some kind of hierarchy inside the jobs okay now let let me sh show you on high level what is job okay we have to just come to workflows click on jobs if you want more about delta live tables there is a video in my channel which i have created before this you can view that okay now when you click on jobs when you click on create jobs you will come to this page and inside the task we'll have multiple options if you see the types of the tasks we have notebook if you want to run some python script we can if you want to run some python wheel file we can if you want to run some sql query we, we can do that if you want to run in some delta live tables we can if you want to run some dbt command uh, data build tool we can even do that if you want to run some spark submit if you want to have some uh, if else condition we can do that so we'll try to cover as many as possible in this video i have already created a job i'll try to edit and show you okay like we can create some kind of hierarchy dependencies and make sure our pipeline like we literally create a pipeline here and we can make sure that the, the first task will be the notebook and the second task will be another notebook third will be some spark submit command fourth will be uh, some python like based on the requirement so we can create a jobs like how we do it in airflow the similar thing how we do in adf the similar thing can be done uh, achieved here as well so when you uh, create a notebook here it will ask you to select the path and all uh, when you select the python script it will ask you to select the python file from our i have one python file here so i can select that or else, uh, sorry mm, and when you try to select the delta live table pipeline it will ask you to select the delta live table pipeline so we can do everything like spark submit we can we have to do the spark submit command right iphone iphone class the jar name and everything so like it provides all if, if you want to give some if else condition we can even do that like it's kind of mini airflow and mini adf if you ask me so now I, you, you got it right how do we create a job so now let's go and edit the job which i already have so that it will get better clarity this is my job and if i come to task i have a first notebook which uses databricks auto loader auto loader in databricks is nothing but to read streaming files and write uh, we use auto loader in databricks to read any streaming files we use auto loader and i have already made a video on auto loader you can view that to get it more clarity on auto loader so this is the notebook if you if i click on the task this, i just named the task name as staging this is a notebook i have given the no notebook path and i have selected the cluster my own cluster and it does it depend on anything i did not select anything because this is my first task and i can add some parameters as well and the parameters which you add will come as widgets in your notebook so what is the notebook i have selected i have selected staging notebook what are the parameters I added? Job ID, task ID, and all. So the values are dynamically generated. Databricks supports all these values. Okay, like if you want to get the job ID, job name, when is the job started, the task uh, name, notebook path, work ID, workspace ID, workspace URL, all these kind of information can dynamically come. If you want to add something manual, also you can do as well. If you ask me in name, and you can pass something, some kind of value. But if you want to use some Databricks default uh, parameters, you can even use as well. So I'm taking three parameters. Uh, oh, sorry, this is wrong. I'm taking the, these three parameters. And if you see my notebook, it comes, we have to read those three parameters, right? So we have to create a widget with the same key which we have created here. 
see the job id task id this is the key name will come under the widget name and the values whatever pass over there will come here that's whatever we pass over there will come here and we are not passing any hard coded values we are passing the dynamic values which databricks provides okay like it really creates some unique run id it creates some task id it creates a start time date and everything and also i we can add notification as well and also guys to tell you databricks supports all these kind of notification one is email teams slack uh, page duty webhook like if you want to see, for suppose if the job started and if you want to send an email you can do during failure if you want to send an email you can do to add notifications we have to just click on add here this is retry sorry i just if you remove this you will get add okay when you click on add notification you have to select the destination i already selected i i want uh, i already have the email option selected so i'll select the new destination for suppose if i want to uh, send a notification in my teams so we have to come here and we have to click on manage manage uh, and we have to add another destination here so if i want to select teams if i select here and web url in, in inside the teams we can get the web url so that we have to just paste it it's kind of key or some configuration key between the your databricks and your teams that's it and when you create it you will get it over there you will get it here that's it you'll get the destination name here and you can select when we when do you want to send that notification during start or failure or anything that's it that's how we send the notifications okay if you want to have any retries we can just add add those like one time or two time or three time like how many retries you want you can do that for suppose if you want to throw in warning after some time you can do that for suppose if you want to throw it out time out error after some period of time you can even add do that so th this is this is what we are doing in the first notebook i mean in the first task inside the job we create the task so this is a notebook task and the, my next one is also a notebook task which i am doing similarly but if you see i have added a dependency here depends on the staging task so i got this okay if you just remove this they they, they come parallel so they run parallel i just want dependency that's it and also when you select on the dependency when should it run only when succeeded or when failed or when all done if you what is the difference between all done and all succeeded is like all done whether it fails or succeeds it does not matter and it executes the next one that is called all done only when succeeded you have to select all succeeded and the same parameters if you want pass you can pass manually or what i have told you before like some data bricks helps us Uh, by providing few dynamic parameters like job details or the task unique identifier ta job unique identifier time stamp and all those things uh, that's it the both both the tasks are notebooks only which is fine now if you see i have created another uh, two tasks which depends on a single task how did i do just just i i like uh, i just click on add task and we can create a new task right so when i create a new task uh, i have selected the type as sql here it's a sql task and also we need to uh, when you select the notebook see everything is gone but when you select the sql it ask for the sql task so we have to select the query i want a query to run so what is the query so to create a queries uh, we have to go to this option we have to under queries just by clicking on it you can create a query i have created a sample query but uh, it just reads some select statement but it won't run because i have a constraint i can't use this uh, sql warehouse cluster because i have limitations in my azure account so i it won't run it might fail but that's okay the, the, i mean the overall intention is to show you how we can create an uh, how, how we can create a queries task as well in the jobs we we, we saw how we create notebooks we saw how we can create query task sql query task and now let's see how we can create if else uh, task as well Th there is another task type called if else if you see when you click on here if else condition task is there right so let's see how this works so if you see if else and what i am checking here if you come here and i i just want to check the status of my previous uh, task so i just got like what are the tasks i have if you see here under task i have task dot staging task dot final layer so i mean i am i can get the information of each and every of the previous task so i just selected task dot final i just want to check the status of the previous one alone 
सो टास्क डॉट फाइनल लेयर डॉट आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू चेक द स्टेटस ऑफ माई प्रीवियस टास्क अलोन सो आई जस्ट सेलेक्टेड दिस एंड आई एम जस्ट चेकिंग इफ इट इज इक्वल टू सक्सेस और इफ इट इज फेल्यूर एंड इफ आई वॉन्ट टू रन समथिंग एल्स आई कैन डू सो आई आई जस्ट आई एम जस्ट चेकिंग द स्टेटस ऑफ माई प्रीवियस लाइक सो द कंडीशन टास्क इज यूज टू हैंडल दिस कैंड ऑफ सीनारीज वेर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू चेक सम स्टेटस ऑफ द प्रीवियस टास्क समथिंग लाइक दैट सो डज इट डिपेंड ऑन एनी थिंग इफ आई रिमूव इट इट बिकम्स अ पैरल यस इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द माइ फाइनल लेयर सो इट केम हियर दैट्स इट सो इट रन ओनली इफ द प्रीवियस ऑल आर सक्सीडेड दैट्स इट सो नाउ इफ आई गो टू अनदर टास्क आई दिस इज जस्ट एन अनदर नोटबुक सिमिलर टू माई फर्स्ट टू एंड इफ यू सी आई एम जस्ट रनिंग ईवन ए पाइथॉन स्क्रिप्ट एज वेल आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू शो यू हाउ टू क्रिएट ए टास्क फॉर द पाइथॉन स्क्रिप्ट एज वेल सो इन द टास्क टाइप वेन यू क्रिएट एड यू जस्ट सेलेक्ट द python script that's how i have done so i i just gave the name of that and we have to select the uh, source where is your python script is it in some git or is it in some workspace it's in my workspace databricks workspace folder here so i just selected that even for the notebook also we get the same option here if is it in workspace or is it in git it's in workspace so i just selected that and i gave that path and if i uh, and i when do i want to run it only when the conditional task is failed if you see here when you come here the output of the conditional task is two uh, true and false only when it is failed run this python script when it is succeeded i want the other one that's it so when i come here when it is succeeded i want to run this one when it is failed i want to run this one so this is how we create tasks inside the databricks jobs There are multiple op multiple task options inside the jobs. Like we we can have notebooks, Python, some Spark submit command to run some SQL queries, Delta live tables, uh, and some if else conditions. Everything. And also, guys, uh, for scheduling purpose, uh, sorry, before scheduling, I just want to uh, explain about the permissions. You can edit the permissions here. Like just click on edit and select uh, whether the, the so select the groups. and whether the person should be a owner or can manager can be or all those this is a place where we can give the permissions and also finally job notification when you click on edit notification when you click on add notification you come to the previous thing which we have seen before this is for job level notification this is for task level notification here the notification what we had is for task level notification if you see i added it for this particular task only if this particular task has failed I'll, i want to get an email similarly you can you can do the same for the job level as well and the final thing which i would like to discuss is scheduling databricks supports three types of uh, options here for schedule and trigger it supports three one is continuous if you want to run it continuously this job if it is a streaming job and all but mostly we use delta live tables for that and second is scheduled if you want to schedule it uh, see every every first day every second day every third day something like that if you want more detailed at what time and all that's it or uh, else the second option is file arrival so whenever the file comes you want to trigger it so i have selected the file arrival option if you see i selected the file arrival and this is the volume path which i have given and whenever any files lands into this path i want this databricks jobs to run okay now let's go so so i i guess i am very clear on explaining how we create tasks inside the jobs and what are all the task types databricks is providing us uh, it's kind of mini airflow and uh, adf uh, to repeat again that's it so uh, now let me trigger this job okay now what what i'll do is i have a file here i'll go and upload a file in the path if you see the status so now the job is not in running state so now the job is not in running state i'll go and upload a file in my volume which i have mentioned there that is this one and once the file lands it triggers the job triggers i'll just add some dummy file here so we have successfully uploaded the file here 
so now let's go and check whether the job is triggered or not so now let's go to this iris job the job should start shortly see guys see now the job has started automatically once the file has arrived i mean if you see here i have mentioned here every minute that means it is checking it goes and checks every minute in this volume whether a new file has arrived if it has if it arrives then it triggers the job immediately so that's what happened if you see it's running and to debug anything the my first task is successfully succeeded and if i click on this i can i can view the notebook and the run status as well if you are printing or anything you, you will get that if you see i am just assigning it to data frame so the data frame information we can see so that's how we can easily view everything by clicking on that uh, run that's it clicking on that so this one everything so the conditional if you want to see uh, this is my conditional task so if i click on that i can view see the value is successful and we i have given the value as successful it's matching so true so accordingly it should go to true only it should not go to false condition so when it is true it goes to this task only not to this value so the my camera task should uh, trigger and we should not see any failed task python here if you come and see see if you see it's black color that means excluded because its conditional dependency was not met that's it because we got it as true so the camera task is triggered so that's how we de debug by just clicking on the specific task we can go and view uh, the notebook or the python file or everything whatever we have given or else if you want to just give view the logs just click on this and click on logs that's it it will take you to the log page if you just click on this if you want to ch ch go to the spark ui page you can go there if you want to view more details about this cluster you can view there if you want to view logs uh, you can view the log page like here we get uh, driver logs std out logs and everything that's how we can easily debug that's it guys everything is run and one is skipped because of our if else condition thank you so much